Welcome back to another video. So I'm taking a look at another mini PC. This is Chewy's latest called the GT Box. Now don't be fooled by that name because GT, you'd think, oh, that might actually have some power to it. It might be out of game. Well, not really. And the box as well, it says it's powerful and small, but it is neither of those as you'll see in this particular video. So the spec of it, just like the B-Link U55 I reviewed, it has the Core i3 5005U, 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. This one, however, because it is a little bit bigger, we can at least fit a 2.5 inch SATA 3 hard drive in it. So let's first take a look at what we get inside the box. You can see the mini PC is well packaged here with padding either side. Inside the small box, you'll find our AC-DC adapter. So it is 12 volts, 3 amps, and we get a SATA 3 cable. This is for connecting up, say, a 1 terabyte hard drive or an SSD 2.5 inch hard drive if you wanted to, and then four mounting screws. Inside, you'll also find some leaflets. So we have a warranty card, inspection card, and a quick start guide. This mini PC has both an alloy and plastic build here. So you can see the top of it has alloy and the bottom. So the height of it is eight centimeters, the width is 16 and the length 20. So it's not exactly small to me. So the front, we just had the power button. There is unfortunately no front facing USB port. Left side, just an intake vent. And on the right, the same again. So all of the ports are on the back of it, as you can see right here. So we have DC in for powering it, two USB 3 ports, two USB 2, two HDMI. So you can run dual monitors or dual TVs, but 1440p maximum resolution out of both of these, that's all the chipset supports, which is a bit of a shame. So not even 4K here. And we've got gigabit LAN and then two separate audio ports here. So one is audio in and audio output. So getting into the internals is not too hard. You just have four screws to remove. And it's interesting that they put like a void warranty sticker over one of them, but we still need to access the internals, of course, in order to install, say, a SATA 3 SSD or hard drive. So on the reverse of the bottom side, you can see here, this is where you would mount a SATA 3 SSD. So you screw it into here, and then you need to plug that plug in, of course. So that's our SATA connection and power for that drive to the motherboard. And that connection you can see right here. So the SATA 3 and there is the power. So the SSD can be upgraded here. It is a M.2 SATA 3 one, 22 by 80 is the size. And you can see a little heat sink there and tiny little fans. So hopefully it's not gonna to be too loud, but of course I will give you feedback in this review of the thermals fan noise. So it is gonna be circulating hot air around the case. There are vents around it. So some fresh cooler air should come in. So first up, we'll take a look at the bias. So it is completely locked down to us. There's no advanced settings that we can tweak. You can just change the boot order. So the RAM, it's running at 1600 MHz, DDR3, single channel. So exactly like the B-Link U55 here. So when you first power it up, you have to go through Windows Setup. And the Windows 10 image has all of these pre-installed language packs here for you, which is good. So just to run through a couple of things here, we've got Realtek. Land on here, the port is working fine. All of the USB 3 ports will power external hard drives. So I have connected up a one terabyte drive. It's reading it just fine. And our included storage, which is that 256 gigabytes of SATA 3, it's NETAC. Never heard of this brand before. You can see the speeds here. So they are fine for what it is, SATA 3. It's okay. It's not really gonna hold the system up or anything like that. So I do have some benchmarks here too in the background. We've got Geekbench 4 here, so this score is quite decent for this, and I found out the reason why, and that's because Chewy have actually set no power limit whatsoever on this chip, so it can use as much power as it wants. Not that it's going to really benefit too much from that, because it's, uh, well, 15 watts by default, but it has just that 2 gigahertz, and there's no turbo, so it's just 2 cores, 2 gigahertz, that's it. And here's our OpenCL score, came out a little bit higher than expected, so again, faster than the Gemini Lake mini PCs and the Polo Lake ones that I have been reviewing. Now Windows 10, it is fully activated and you can see right there that it's running version 1809 is the build. And free space on first boot, you get 221 gigabytes as you can see right here. Now just quickly taking a look at our wireless performance, I've noticed that the range and the reception seems to be good. The speeds that I'm getting they are to be as expected here because I'm about a room or two away from the actual wireless router they have here. So it's got the Intel wireless 3165, seen a lot of this chip 
and it performs well, but if of course you want faster than this, then use the LAN port. Now to take a look just a little bit at real world performance. So what can you expect from this dual core 5th gen 5500U? So I'm just gonna randomly search here, dogs. I haven't searched this before. Let's go and open up a bunch of tabs here, different websites, and we'll see how this performs. We'll check out some 4K video too as well. Do that in just a minute. Okay, so normally you can safely run about 10 to 15 or so tabs with the eight gigabytes of RAM and this spec of CPU and swap between them. So we'll check how things are loading in. A wireless is pretty fast, so it shouldn't really be holding things up here. It will be the CPU that'll be holding things up. So the task manager just open that up and you probably see that the CPU now, yes, it is being maxed out there as expected. So let's swap between these. A couple of seconds for it to load in. Scrolling speed is still very fast. Overall, the general performance for light tasks is actually reasonably good on this. Now let's check out 4K streaming. Can it do that? The problem is you can't actually output 4K from the HDMI ports. So I'm gonna load in a demo right here. We'll check the stats, the load time. I'm just gonna have to mute this, of course. All right, so stats on and make sure this is set to 4K. And take a look if it's dropping any frames. So it has dropped four frames. Oh, it is steadily dropping them right now. That's caching in. So it's not keeping up for some reason. So I have to pause for a second. Buffer health is actually good, 30 seconds. But no, quite stuttery and choppy. So it doesn't like it. So I'm now trying that same clip again, but this time in Edge. But that's not even set on 4K, of course. Oh, look at that. Edge only lets us play it in HD. And there it's fine. Zero drop frames, so that's not gonna be a problem. As you can see, full screen, no drop frames there either. So we'll step it up a little bit now. Try an HEVC encoded file. Now this one's 10-bit, where this is actually quite weak. It probably will not be able to play this at all. All right, so a few stutters. So this is the real weakness of this particular chipset. It doesn't have that native hardware decoding, making it not a great media player at all. So something that's more lightweight, so this is a 4K clip here that's only 48 megabits per second. That you can see, this is at least playable. It's smooth, that's just me skipping ahead. So I'll handle that just fine. So really it's just for HD files. Of course, we can, can't even output 4K with it. And if you happen to be editing things like documents and spreadsheets, it handles it well as long as they're not super huge. So if it's an, a spreadsheet that's just got thousands and thousands and thousands of rows, then you'll probably run into some problems with lag. So editing like this, doing these kind of basic tasks is really the maximum you really wanna be doing with something like this. So it's very just light work as all this chipset is really good at with the dual cores. So internet browsing, documents, HD, full HD video playback. Now for gaming performance, you really are limited to old games. Light engine titles like League of Legends or Counter-Strike Global Offensive here you can see, which is scraping about 20 frames per second. It's not running particularly well as you can see. Ideally I would like to see at least 30 frames per second. And there's a full server at the moment too, so that is having an impact on it. So it's just playable. You probably want to lower the resolution from 20, 720p that I have at the moment down to something like 800 times 600. And that just leaves our thermals and the fan noise, which is very good. It's so quiet, this machine. You hardly hear it. It's just a constant same speed, the fan. I haven't heard it if it does have a higher level. I haven't heard it go to 100% max. You have to put your ear down to the case to hear it. It really is that quiet. So the thermals are very good. You can see max temps here, 61 degrees on the package, and I really highly doubt this will ever go over 70. So it is a bigger case they have used, but it does have its advantages. You can undervolt a little bit if you wanted to do that, so that's gonna help out the temps a little bit, but really, it's not needed at all. So I wanted to point out here why I said it's so big for a mini PC. I mean, look at the size difference. This is the B-Link U55 that I mentioned a couple of times because it has the same eight gigabytes of RAM, but it is upgradable. That's a SODIMM slot and the Core i3 
5005U, just like this one here. But size wise, just look at how huge this difference is. And that's why I said it's not really a mini PC. It's not so mini to me. But it does come, of course, having the biggest base as a positive because the thermals are so much better. It's just got so much room in that case that you can, of course, too, add a 2.5 inch spindle hard drive up to two terabytes or four terabytes, whatever you can get now, and an SSD, which you cannot do in something so small here. So the fan noise in this is almost non-existent. It is so quiet. It's hardly even audible. I mean, I didn't even know it was on. You gotta put your ear up to it. Oh yeah, okay, the fan is actually working. And I had to open it up to see that it was spinning. It was really that quiet for me. And this one here is a little bit louder, runs a little bit hotter. So thermals are very good. So those are the positives with the GT Box here. That yes, it is faster uh, than this one, slightly because of the unlocked power limit. It also is faster than the Gemini Lake Mini PCs that I have reviewed. So the N4100s out there. However, if your plan is for one of these mini PCs to run, for example, Kodi and you want the best video playback and you want 4K, then they're out of the question here. It's not a mini PC to get because the hardware video decoding performance is terrible for the modern codecs that, that you get out there. So anything like that's got HEVC 10 bit is going to run terrible like a slideshow, VP9 as well, and of course, the HDMI ports on it. We've got two of them, but only 1440p maximum. So the data chipset is really holding back the GT box here. And that's why it's very hard to recommend for the price, even though it is, yes, better than this one that I've reviewed. I will not be reviewing any more of the Core i3 5005U mini PCs because it's just not worth it, I think, especially here now, mid 2019, Thank you so much for watching this review. Please do like if you like the video, of course, and subscribe for more tech videos from me. Bye for now.